my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to our mini Root series. This is a game designed by Cole Worley and published by Leader Games. It plays two to four players. Today, we're going to be starting off our mini series with the base factions. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we mean by a mini series is we're basically going to play this game about three times over the next several weeks, changing up the factions and maybe doing a co op at the very end. Yes, that's right. And so, like you were mentioning, today we're doing the base factions. That includes well, actually, can you tell which factions we're playing as? <laughs> I'm wearing green, and I have a little patch of the trees. So I am the Woodland Alliance. And I am the Eerie Dynasty. Yes, so she's the Bluebirds. And so, yes, today is going to be base factions. But after this, we're hoping to showcase the Underworld expansion mm -hmm. and then probably end with the co-op mode co-op experience yes mm -hmm. and each game is going to feature the clockwork expansion because it is an expansion that allows you to substitute bots for any of the missing players around the table so our goal here is to hopefully showcase the different ways that you can play at two yep. and now two things before we get started the first thing is if you'd like to learn more information about this game and all the different expansions and kind of what it's about we have included a referral link in the description down below now we do want to mention that this is technically an affiliate link, mm -hmm. but the series is in no way sponsored by anyone. Right. And so all of the opinions expressed at the end of our videos are ours and ours alone. And last but not least, if you can do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we make any rules mistakes, we can make those corrections there. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and want to follow along on the rest of the series, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, we are going to get started. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up here for our two player game of Root, plus a third bot, yes. which is the Mechanical Marquise over here. 2.0. That's right. Especially if you've never played Root before, just to kind of give you the lay of the land, in the middle of the table, we have the main board. Now, the base game of Root does come with two different sides mm -hmm. of the board. On yeah. the opposite side is the winter-looking side. It's all white. It is, and it's slightly different in the way that you play, mm -hmm. but this is the main game. Right. Each player also has their own player board that represents the specific type of faction that you're playing as, as well as all of the different rules that kind of dictates how a turn works for you. Mm -hmm. And so in this game, we're each playing as different asymmetric woodland creatures who are pretty much going to war. <laughs> yes, this is a uh, war game wrapped up in a cutesy package. Yes. So. Each player can do the same basic types of actions. Mm. We can build, we can move, go into combat, craft cards. But at the end of the day, the object of the game is to score 30 points. Yes. So this is just a race, race to 30 points. Once somebody reaches that, then the game ends immediately and they win. And so because the game is very asymmetric, we are going to leave the specific nitty gritty rules of the processes of the different factions to the actual gameplay. Mm -hmm. And so for the rules overview, we're just going to kind of go over the general gist of how the game works. And so if you look closely at the board, the board is separated into different clearings. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of tell what a clearing is because it's bunched with a with bunch of uh, colored trees. Each clearing is of a specific type, and you can tell that type based off of color and symbol. So the yellow clearings are the rabbit yep. clearings, the orange ones are the mouse clearings, and the red ones are the fox clearings. Mm -hmm. And the significance of this is going to come into play when we talk about the cards in a second. And so each player's turn is very similar in the sense that each turn is divided into three phases. There's a birdsong phase, a daylight, and an evening. Now, what you do in those phases varies depending on the faction that you're playing as. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there are some common action types that all players can do, yep. one of which is moving. So over the course of the game, you're going to be moving your warriors from one clearing to another in the attempts to control the different areas of the board and go into battle. So the one rule that you must pay attention to when moving is your warriors can only move from either a clearing that you rule or to a clearing that you rule. Mm -hmm. And the definition of ruling a clearing is having the most number of pieces cumulatively in that clearing. Yep. And so pieces come in two different forms. We have these wooden warrior pieces, which are basically your character pieces. And then we also have these cardboard shits, which are going to be the different buildings that you're going to be able to build over the course of the game. And so if I were to move on my turn, I can move any number of my birds over here over to any of the adjacent clearings because I currently rule this clearing. Players can also engage in combat. And so the way that that works is say if I'm in a clearing here with the Marquise, if there was more than one enemy faction, I would choose one to go into battle with. And then as the attacker, I would get to roll these two dice. The attacker gets the higher number and the defender gets the lower number. And so the way that that works is you pick each other off one to one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so in this example, I rolled a three to the Marquise's one. And so the result of this battle is we would each pick off one warrior. I also want to mention that each of these clearings has these spaces here for buildings. And so over the course of the game, we're going to be building our building types in those areas. And so if the example had looked like this and we rolled a three, two, 
then my warriors would remove both of their pieces because this still counts as a piece that you can remove during battle. Exactly. So anytime you remove cardboard from the board, these are each worth one point. One point, So yeah. I would score one point for removing this building. I also do want to mention that there are these ambush cards that people can play prior to going into battle as a defender, which would deal two immediate hits to the attacker, but mm -hmm. we'll kind of showcase these as we play the game. Yep. And so now on the topic of cards, the deck of cards look like this. Each card has a different suit type and the suits primarily correspond to the different types of clearings on the board. And so each of these cards typically will also show a craftable ability, meaning you can construct these cards on your turn in order to get either points or an ongoing ability. And so the bottom left hand corner of each of these cards tells you what the requirement is in order to craft that card. So in this example, the mouse in a stack card requires one mouse in order to build it, and this arms trader card requires two foxes in order to build it. And so these requirements can be met by placing the building type specific to your faction in clearings of those animal types. Had I built a roost in a mouse clearing, like over here, because this is a mouse clearing, then on my turn, I could craft this card, mm -hmm. giving me one point, as well as this specific item from the item storehouse over here, which is this uh, sort of bag-like item. Mm -hmm. And the significance of this is in the future, if anybody else wants to craft an item that has this specific type, there's only one left. As soon as those run out, then those items can no longer be crafted. Exactly. There's also another further significance to these items, but that is only when playing the Vagabond, which is a faction that's not going to be in play during this game. Mm -hmm. The next type of universal action that players are going to be able to take are building their specific building types yep. onto the board. And so this is going to be done in different ways, depending on who you are. But the basic gist of this is we're going to be able to build our buildings onto these spots, and they're going to score us points, either immediately or at the end of each turn. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to be able to recruit more of our warriors onto the board, but those are the three main types of actions that actually score you points. Right. Now we briefly just want to go over the basic asymmetry of each of the factions we're playing as, and also kind of discuss the way that the bot works before we get into the playthrough. And so I'm playing as the Eerie Dynasties. The Eerie is a programming faction. Mm -hmm. Over the course of the game, I'm going to be playing cards to the top of my player board here that is going to dictate what I must do on my turn. And so at the start of the game, I'm going to have to choose between one of these four eerie leaders. And depending on the leader that I choose, it dictates where my two starting viziers go in my decree. Say, for example, I chose the commander as my eerie leader. As long as he is my leader, as an attacker in battle, I deal an extra hit. So all of these leaders are asymmetric in that way. And I must place my starting viziers under the move and the battle area. At the start of each of my turns, I must play at least one card from my hand to my decree up here. So say for example, I play this card in the recruit area. Now on my turn, I must do all of these things in this order. I must recruit warriors to a mouse clearing. Yep. I then must move from any clearing because uh, bird cards are considered wild. And then I'm required to battle at least once in a wild clearing as well. I will not be able to build because no card has been played here. And so as you can probably already tell, over the course of the game, I'm going to have to play more and more cards to this decree. And so if at any time I am unable to complete my entire decree, then my faction goes into turmoil, all of these cards get discarded with the exception of the viziers, and I lose one point per bird card that I had played to my decree. So a minimum it's going to be two because you must always play these two loyal viziers. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I then must switch up my eerie leader. He gets booted. I craft cards using my roosts, and I earn points at the end of every turn, depending on how many of these roosts I have played out onto the board. And that is my faction in a nutshell. I'm yep. going to be focusing on making sure my program works because every time it doesn't work, I'm going to lose points. You get knocked down. It's going to be a setback. Okay, so my faction, it's completely different than how Monique's faction interacts with the game. And I'm the Woodland Alliance. And thematically, what's going on here is I am the native creatures to this land. And we kind of had enough with this battle between the cats <laughs> and the birds. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And so we're trying to gain support and sympathy with all the different creatures that are native to the lands. Uh -huh. And the way I basically do this and score points is I want to get my sympathy tokens out onto the board. Uh, as I uncover, they get sweeter and sweeter and I get more and more points. Uh, but the way I do that is by having a deck of supporter cards. Now, these are going to be the same type of cards that we have that we've been talking about. It's just they interact a little bit differently. So for my faction, I'm going to have two different decks of cards. I'm going to have cards that are considered in my hands and also a supporter deck. And I'm going to use the cards in the supporter deck to allow me to put out these tokens out onto the board. And I'll go over the details of that as we play the game. Naveen's faction is also sneaky in the way yes. that these sympathy tokens work. Anytime he has a sympathy token in a clearing, 
and, and any other faction either moves into the clearing or battles that token, then we must give him a card that matches the clearing that we're in. Yes, it's called Outrage. Mm -hmm. So it's outrageous that you have done this to the native people. Yes, and so that card that we give him goes into his supporter deck. Yes. That supporter deck can only be viewed by Naveen. Me, yeah. And the significance of that is he's going to have to discard um, matching pairs or triplets depending on the clearing that we're in. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we have the Mechanical Marquise. Now this is a player board that is a part of the, the Clockwork expansion. Mm -hmm. The way that the Clockwork expansion works is it turns any of the four base factions into a robot so that you can automate its turn. Yep. In the base game, the Marquise is the most straightforward of all the factions. Sure, yeah. They're going to be doing things like just standard moving around, building their buildings. Every time they build a building out onto the board, they earn points. But we're not going to be using the Marquise in the same manner. Yes, it's similar, but not the same. And so the way that the robot works is at the beginning of their turn, we're going to draw the top card from the deck. And this is going to be considered their order card. Now, if the card has a craftable item on it, then they always craft it if the item is still available. And then they would play out their entire turn only affecting clearings of the order type. And so in this example, the order card is a mouse card. Mm -hmm. They're going to battle, recruit, build, and move focusing on those clearing types. If the order card is a bird card, then we do a lot of other things, which we'll discuss during gameplay. It'll probably happen. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah. But we do want to emphasize that the Mechanical Marquise is still going to be scoring points yes. as the game progresses. So they can very well win. If they get to 30 before either of us do, then unfortunately we don't, lose, we lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is the overall gist of how Root works. I know we didn't explain all the nitty gritty details. You probably no. don't know exactly how to play after that. But we're going to walk you through all of our turns yes. during playthrough. We'll walk it through, yes. So we're going to do a little bit of cleanup, and then we're going to get started. Okay, so we have reset the board. We are ready to play. Um, I have dealt three cards to both of us, and then me, I start with three cards in my supporter deck over here. And so if you didn't join us for the teach, we are playing with the Mechanical Marquise as our uh, Clockwork Expansion bot. bot yeah. The bots also come with cards that change the difficulty level as mm -hmm. well as add on uh, different traits, up to four different traits. We're not playing with any of these cards for this first game. We just want to play the bot how it is so mm -hmm. you can kind of see how the bot functions. And so in order to see who goes first, we are going to roll one of these dice. I guess I'll be number one, he'll be two, two. and the bot will be three. Three, yeah. Okay, so let's see. One. One. Okay. All right. So Nine. it's me. Okay. So Two. for our setup, Naveen is pretty much all ready to go, right? I'm ready. So I just have to choose my leader and place my starting viziers. Okay. Um, I have my my starting cards, and that's really important because it helps uh, guide my decision here. But I think I'm going to be the charismatic leader, and so as a charismatic leader, I must place my viziers in recruit and battle. And the special power here is every time I recruit, I get to place two warriors instead of one. Okay. So that's everything. Sure. Are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we are going to begin. The first phase is the bird song phase. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. As the Eerie, the very first thing I can do in my bird song phase is if my hand is empty, I get to draw a card. My hand is not empty, so I skip that. And then I must add one or two cards to my decree. To start off the game, I'm going to add just one because... I don't want to be in trouble here. So I'm going to add this, this rabbit card over here on move. So this is going to require me to move from a clearing that is of the rabbit type, which is great because that's where I start. Sure, yeah. Lastly, if ever I have no roosts during the birdsong phase, then I get to place one roost and, a, and three warriors into one of the clearings. But this is not the case because I have my starting roost down here. And for anybody who hasn't played this game before, my starting roost is in the exact opposite location of the Marquise's keep. And so that is a very powerful location for them. Next, I go into my daylight phase. So during this phase, I get to craft the cards in my hand using roosts I have onto the board. Currently, I only have one roost and it's here in the mouse clearing, but I don't have any cards that I would like to craft. So I'm going to skip that. And now I'm going to resolve my decree, which is the meat and potatoes of my faction. <laughs> what you so got? I have to resolve from left to right, resolving all cards in each column uh, one at a time. And so first I must recruit in a matching clearing with a roost. And so the only clearing that it has a roost is this one. This is a bird card, which is wild. So this is totally legal. I get to place two of my warriors into this clearing because my leader is the charismatic leader. Then I must move from a matching clearing. So I have to move from a rabbit clearing to anywhere else, as long as I either rule the clearing I'm leaving from or rule the clearing I'm going into. And so what direction do we want to go in? <laughs> These are all equal. I'm going to take four of my warriors and we're going to move over here to this uh, this clearing where we have one Marquise friend. <laughs> okay. 
Lastly, I must battle in a wild clearing. So I'm going to battle in the clearing that I'm in over here. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and roll the die. And I have a two and one. So because I'm the attacker, I get the higher value die and the Marquise gets the lower value die. The Marquise removes one of my warriors and I remove it. One of theirs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't get any points for that because yeah. it's not a cardboard token, but I now do completely rule this area. And so that's it for my decree because I've completed all cards from left to right. Mm -hmm. Now I go into my evening phase, which allows me to score victory points of the rightmost empty space on my roost track. Right now, I've only placed that one roost, so I actually get zero points. Terrible. So I don't get any points right now. And so then I end my turn by drawing one card. Um, at the end of my turn, I have a hand limit of five cards, so I must discard down to that, if ever I have more. And that ends my turn. So now we go to Naveen. Okay, so for me, uh, we're going to go through Birdsong, Daylight, and Evening as well. Okay, so my Birdsong phase, there's two different things that I'm supposed to do in a certain order. The first thing is Revolt. Now, I cannot legally do a Revolt, so we'll talk about it later, because I'm definitely going to want to do that in the future. Uh, so we're going to go to the second thing here, which is Spread Sympathy. And what spreading sympathy means is I get to take one of these tokens and put them out onto the board. And the way I do that is I would take a matching uh, type of card that matches one of these clearings, and I would play as many cards as the threshold that you see here. So in the first sympathy token I would play would only cost me one card because it's within this band right over here. If it was later in the game, it could cost me potentially two matching cards or three matching cards. So the best way to show you is by me doing it. Uh, I'm gonna put out a sympathy token in this fox clearing over here. So I will spend this card, so that's gonna go out. Okay. And because it's in this little band right here, it only cost me one, and I'm gonna place the sympathy token right here. Now, typically when I put out sympathy tokens, it's gonna score me the number of points depicted uh, from what's below it. The very first one gives me no points. Mm -hmm. um, so ah, fortunate for terrible. me. Terrible. Uh, but I can <laughs> continue spreading sympathy because I can do it as many times as I want, as long as it's legal. Now that I have one sympathy token on the board, I must place adjacent to that sympathy token following these lines and still following the rules as to which creature is in each clearing. And I will put out a second sympathy. I'm gonna put it out into this region right here so this is the uh, bunny rabbit over there so that's going to go out okay and that puts this sympathy token into this region and now that does score me one victory point so i am on the board ah already on the map i'm there okay and Are that you going to continue to spread sympathy i will not do such things um but i will go into my daylight phase here so the Three things I can do here is I can craft cards, like Monique explained earlier. I can mobilize, which is basically taking cards from my hand and putting them into my supporter. Or I can train, which I'll explain later on. Right now, I'm not going to be doing any training because that requires me to have one of these bases out there. And that's, again, something that is related to revolting, which we'll talk about later. And so Naveen can do any of those actions any number of times yep. that he'd like to or he's able to. Yep. Uh, so I am going to definitely mobilize this card into my supporters. And when Naveen chooses to craft, he's going to be crafting using the clearing types where his sympathy tokens are. Correct. So let me do that right now. For example, I'm going to craft this travel gear. Ah. Because I'm in this bunny rabbit clearing, which is what's required here, I'm going to be able to gain one point as well as take this token into my... Possession. Yep. Yeah. So I get one point. This goes out of the game. And so now I have two points. Nice. All right. And then the last card here, I am going to actually do that mobilize action again. I'm going to put this down into my sympathy or my supporter deck. Very good. Yep. At the end of that turn, I'm going to go into evening phase. Evening phase would be military operations and drawing a card. I have no military officers right now. Again, we'll talk about all that later. So I'm just gonna draw up one card. Yes, so for Naveen's evening phase, he gets to do a lot of different types of actions like moving, battling, all that stuff that's kind of normal for the other factions. Mm -hmm. He has to build to to kind of earn the right to do that. I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> not right there now, yet. I'm just putting out little, little tokens. There's okay, your card. That's my one card, okay. All right, so. Now we are going to go to the turn of the Mechanical Marquise. Mm. You may have noticed that the Marquise does not have a hand of cards. So anytime they have to give us a card, we just draw from the, the draw deck. Right. Anytime we have to give them a card, they score a point. Yes. So the first thing that happens is we draw the top card from the deck, and that is the order card for the turn. And so this card is a fox card. Mm -hmm. So all of the actions are going to take place in the fox clearings. So now we look at the order card and see if it is a craftable card, which it is because this card is root T. Yes. The bots craft 
regardless of where their buildings are on the board. Mm -hmm. As long as the item is still in the supply, which it is, so the bot is going to take this uh, tea kettle and, uh, and also, regardless of the amount of points listed on the card, crafted cards will only ever score the bot one point each. Yep. So that one says two, but because it's a bot, they're only going to get one point. Exactly. And so that is it for the bot's birdsong phase. Now we go into daylight, where we're going to do a host of different things with that clearing type. Yes. And so the first thing that happens in the daylight phase is the Marquise is going to go into battle in all of the clearings of the ordered card, which is all of the fox clearings. From what we can see here, it looks like the only clearing with an enemy token is this one, who is Naveen. Naveen. And so typically, when you go into battle, we roll the dice. But because this is an undefended clearing with only one enemy token in it, we don't need to roll the die because the attacker will always get to deal one additional damage in an undefended clearing. Yep. So the Marquise is just going to go ahead and eliminate Naveen's shit. See you later. But... I do benefit from that. That's right. That is outrageous that the Marquis did that. <laughs> uh, I normally would uh, gain a card from a, an active player, but because it's the bot, I just take the top card from the deck right there. Into your supporters. Into my supporters. Gotta so, remember that. Yes. You will go there. <laughs> That's something we like to forget. Sometimes for I forget. forget. Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. And because that was a cardboard shit that the Marquis removed, they score another point. They do. So Protect me, Monique. Not looking good for me. Yeah. Ah, gosh. Next, the Marquis is going to recruit four warriors in each of the fox locations. And so right now, they're in one, two, three, four. They control so just all do, four, yeah. Yeah, one, one in each. So one, two, three, and four. If they controlled less than four, then you would put the extra warriors in the clearing of highest priority. And so that is the significance of these numbered tokens that we have out onto the board. The one is the highest priority clearing. Next, they're going to build a building in the fox clearing with the most number of warriors. That's going to be this one over here. That they control, yes. Yes, but the only thing is this only has room for one building, so it's already been taken. So we're going to go to the next clearing of highest priority, which is this one. And so because the order card was a fox card, they build a sawmill. Yep, which is designated by this one right here. Yes. Okay. Um, the significance of the buildings is not, is not the same as in the original base game. The sawmills are not going to produce any wood for the purposes of crafting for yep. this bot. Next, they're going to move all of their warriors in excess of three in each of the ordered clearings. So right now, the way we see it, all of the fox clearings has three or fewer warriors, so nobody moves. And lastly, if the Marquise did not place a building out on this turn, and they have five or fewer buildings on the entire map, then they do an action that's called expand, which would essentially allow them to draw another order card and do their whole daylight phase over again. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, not good. good. Yeah. But because they did build a sawmill, then we're going to skip this entirely and go into the evening phase. Unlike in the base game, this is the point where the Marquise gets the score points for the building type that they place onto the board. Yep. And because they placed a sawmill, they're going to get one point for the sawmills. They're out in front. And then you end their turn by discarding their ordered card, which we have already done. And so now it is back to me. And so I'm going to start my birdsong phase by adding to my decree again, which is... Kind of scary. So I'm going to play this mouse card to my build section. So now I can do one of each type of action on my turn. And so now I'm going into daylight where I get to craft one of these cards, which I will not do. And so then I'm going to resolve, resolve my decree. So starting with the recruit action, I must recruit in this clearing because it's the only one that has a roost in it. So I'm going to put uh, two birds just like that. And then I'm going to move. So I, I have to move from this clearing to another one. So I might as well go ahead and take three of these warriors and move them into here because it's another mouse clearing. And then we're going to battle. So I'm going to battle the Marquise over here. Roll the die. All right. Three, two. So it's 3-2, it's which means I eliminate the Marquise token, but they also chip off one of my warriors, unfortunately. And uh, now, finally, I get to build. So I have to build in a mouse clearing and I have two options here. It doesn't really matter where I go. I'm gonna go ahead and just place this uh, building right in here. So now I have a roost in that clearing as well. So we've successfully resolved the decree. We're going to go into the evening phase and I'm now going to score that one point. One point. And I'm going to end my turn by drawing a card. That's all for me. Now on to you. Okay, so once again, uh, my bird song is I can start with Revolt. I am not going to do that right now, so we're just going to move on to Spreading Sympathy. So that was really unfortunate what they did to me over here, because <laughs> uh, I didn't like that. So I am going to spread sympathy, and we're going right back to that fox clearing. So I'm going to spend this okay. to put out my sympathy token back in here, getting me one point. 
Very good. And then I have the option of, do I want to continue spreading sympathy? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So I will spend this one. Okay, it's a mouse. It's Sorry. a mouse. This one still only cost me one because it's in this threshold. So this is going to go into this region here where uh -oh. Monique has joined. And that gets me another victory point for exposing that. And I'm going to hold off on spreading sympathy at that point. And now we're going to go into my daylight. So I can craft this card or I can mobilize it. I'm not going to be doing any of the training because I don't have any officers going on right now and I don't have a base. So I will be mobilizing this card into my supporter deck over here. And then that is going to end the daylight because I have no more cards. And we're going to go into evening. We have no military operations because I don't have officers. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw one card as of right now. Can I have one card, please? Perfect. There you go. Thank you. And that's it. That's it. And now back to the mechanical marquise. Let's go ahead and draw the ordered card. Oh, oh we've got another fox <laughs> order. God. So this is a craftable card. So they go ahead and craft it, taking away one of these items. And this is going to score them one point. One point for crafting. Okay. And then now we're going to go into their daylight. They're going to battle in all of the fox clearings. It's literally what we just so. did. <laughs> so we can just do it again. Okay, so just this one. I go away. We don't have to roll the die because it's one undefended. Uh-huh. But so because they of that. Score a point for that. They do score a point for that. And you get a card in your I supporters do. deck. I do. Okay. And now they're going to recruit another four warriors. Yes, into this the is, same clanks. This is just deja vu here. So this is very one, bad for me. Two. I realize because... Uh, three. And where's that fourth one? Here it is, four. Because I am adjacent to those fox clearings, and that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of warriors. <laughs> yeah, they're... <laughs> okay, now they build another sawmill in the clearing with the, num the highest number of warriors. And so I think this time it's going to be this clearing, because now this clearing has run out of space. Yes. So we're going to put a sawmill yeah. over here. It's this one. It's oh, not this good. is bad. Not good. And now they move. For each piece that's in excess of three, they're one? going to move to an adjacent clearing with the with the most number of enemy pieces. So this, it's just going to be this one. No enemies. One warrior is going to move. Yeah, this one. Oh yeah, that's into me. Into this spot because Naveen is present. So moving into this clearing gets Naveen a supporter. Outrageous that you've moved in. <laughs> the outrage. The outrage. <laughs> Okay, but that goes into my supporters. That's good. Come yes. on in. And then now they they skip the expand action because they were able to build this turn. Ah, <sighs> yes. Um, now they're going to score points. They get two points now. Yes, for the sawmills. Wow, they are moving. They are moving. We discard this order card. <laughs> I don't know, Naveen. We might lose to the bot. We gotta Can we work not lose we, to we gotta work together here. This is not good. <laughs> All right, so back to me. I'm going to start by playing two cards now to my decree. I'm going to play another bird card to the recruit. Uh, action so that I can now recruit to two any two roosts mm -hmm. <laughs> on the board and I'm going to play one of my fox cards to the battle action because I am adjacent to a lot of fox clearings yep. so hopefully we can uh, get some kind of leverage on the marquees here <laughs> they're taking over yeah they are <laughs> So then we go into daylight phase and uh, I'm not going to craft any cards from my hand sure. because maybe I can't. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to resolve the decree. So starting with the recruit action, I can recruit twice in a wild clearing. So I can recruit in both of these or I can recruit in the same clearing twice, which I think I'm going to do. I'm going to recruit um, twice. Makes sense because your move is out of the, yes, the rabbits. So. I can only move out of the rabbits and I'm going to have to battle in a fox clearing. So let's uh, increase our chances here. Sure. <laughs> and I'm going to move from this rabbit clearing to the fox clearing. How many of these people do we want to take? <laughs> Let's take five. Okay. Let's go five. I usually like to go either three or four, but we're going to go five. Because I think we're going to battle twice. So we're going into there. Okay. So that's your move. That's my move. And I must battle twice. I can battle in a fox clearing as well as a wild clearing. So I think we're going to use this clearing twice. Roll it up. First battle. Here we go. You're looking for a three zero. I'm looking for a three zero. That's true. One okay. Zero. okay. Here, here's a one zero. At so least you must take a warrior. Yes. A warriors get uh, chipped away yes. first. Can't be the sawmill. And then, so that was my first battle card. Now for my uh, bird card. I'm going to battle in the same same location. Here we go. One zero. Oh my gosh. That's bad. At least you didn't get hurt. That's true. That is true. <laughs> I'm still alive. Uh, and now I end my decree by building in this mouse area. I'm going to be in trouble if I don't actually move to a mouse location to build next oh, next turn. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna build my roost. Well, you have two mouse locations. You have this one and this one. But I've already built a roost there. Oh yeah, that's right. Only one roost, Only per, one roost. per clearing. Yes. But I am gonna build my roost right there. So that still is fine. Finished with my decree. Now I'm gonna go into evening by scoring my two points. Two points. Thank okay. you. And then I get to draw one card plus an additional one because nice. I have revealed this symbol. 
So two cards into my hand. Very oh, good. Interesting. And that's me. So now it goes to Naveen. Okay, so now I'm in Birdsong. So now I have the potential to uh, revolt. Oh, are you going to? I am going to revolt. And so revolting is I spend two supporters matching the, the sympathetic clearing. So I can spend two uh, bunnies or two mice. Oh my gosh. Right here. Do not. <laughs> and I can do this as many times as I'd like. But you can't let the... You, no, you can only do it once per base. Per base. So the whole correct. purpose of revolting is yes. so that Naveen can put out one of these three bases. Yes. And they are they each represent the three different types of clearings on the board. Mm -hmm. So once he's put out a base in the mouse clearing, he cannot revolt in another mouse clearing. Yes, it's a one time only there. As long as the bases uh, exist. So yeah. I'm going to revolt in this rabbit section oh, here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so these two go out. I, don't, I get none of the benefits at the bottom. I'm just looking at the top left corner. So revolting, what that does is I remove all enemy pieces there. Now there is no um, uh, cardboard, so that doesn't get me any points for doing that. And now I get to put out my base and it is a square chit. So it's gonna go into that nice little section there. So no buildings can be built here as of now. The next thing that's gonna happen is I get to place a warrior in my officer's box here. So that's gonna allow me to do more evening things. And I also get a warrior into this section over here. So I'll lay it face down. Yeah, so now Naveen is on the map. Yes, so I placed a base, the warrior, and my sympathy token stays here. So now I have some level of control of one area right now. That's right. Feels and good. so the, the other benefit that the Woodland Alliance has is uh, whenever we go into combat with these guys, they get the higher, the higher value yes. as defenders, yes. as defenders. So we kind of want to stay clear away from the Woodland Alliance. Stay away from me. Okay, I'm going to revolt a second time. And the only other place I can do it is here no! where I have my sympathy token. <laughs> and so I'm going to spend these two, these wilds to represent two mice to clear out that. So all of Monique's pieces go out, one, two, and your roost goes out. Yes, so Naveen gets a point that for that. That gets me a point for knocking out a cardboard. Uh, and then I get to put out the matching base type. So it's going to be this one. The mouse one's going to go there. And I also get a warrior to go there and another officer. Ah. Yes. Terrible. All right. That was good. Okay. <laughs> you feeling good about uh, that? Yeah, I feel good. That was, I needed that. Okay, I am not going to spread sympathy. Uh, but now I'm going to go into daylight. So I can craft, I can mobilize, or I can train I'm going to train. So what training does is I get to spend a card that matches a built base. So I'm going to spend this mouse card that matches this built base. And it basically turns one of my warriors here into an officer. Okay, now that I have officers, I can take actions in the evening phase. And the amount of actions I can take is dependent on the number of officers I have. So I have three, so I can take three actions. Uh, I'm going to recruit. So I'm going to recruit one. I'm going to recruit two. And then I'm going to recruit a third time here. Yes, and Naveen only recruits to areas that have a base. A base, exactly. So that is my evening action. So now I get to draw cards. And now I get to draw one card plus one for each base that I have out. So I get to draw three cards. Three All cards, right. Please. One, two, and three. There you go. Thank you. Ooh. Ah, this is bad. That was needed. All right, so now the mechanical marquees. Let's draw an order card. We have a mouse. mouse. Clearing. Ah, oh, so. All right. So this is a craftable card. They're going to craft the final one of these items over here okay. for one point. one point. There you go. And then we're going to go into their daylight phase. So, so battles. I don't think they're in any battles in mice territory. Yeah, let's see. The only m mouse clearings that they're in are this one, this one, and... Not even that They're not one. that one, yeah. So Just no battle. Just those two. So, so no battle. Good. So we move on to the next one, which is recruiting. We're going to recruit four warriors, and yeah. I guess you just split them up between those two. Yeah, exactly. Two so and two. two and then oh. two. Thank you. Now we build. Because it is a mouse order card, they're going to build a recruiter. Yes. Recruiter building. Okay. And so it's going to be the, the one with the highest number it's of warriors. It's going to be that one, because these are tied. Uh, these are tied, three and this three. is higher in priority. Yep. So one recruiter building goes into this clearing. They're not actually going to move because none, neither of them are in excess of three. Three and three, yep. And then we skip the expand yep. phase because they've they, built a building. They did build a building, yep. So now they're going to finish their turn by scoring one point. One point because that's what's showing here. Gosh, that's I was enough really marquee. hoping <laughs> that they were going to try to battle Naveen over here because he... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> what? I got to do my thing.
Okay, I'm gonna start my bird song phase by playing two cards to my decree. I can kind of smell my program breaking soon, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna play this rabbit card to my move action. So I'm gonna be able to move twice from this rabbit clearing essentially. Okay. And then I'm going to play this fox clearing card to my build action. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can make this work. Okay. So first thing in my daylight phase, I'm actually going to craft a card. I'm gonna craft this root tea card. It requires me to have a roost in a mouse clearing, which I do right here. Yes. And so because I am the eerie, I only get one point, regardless of how many points it says yeah. on the card. I'm only doing this so I can remove that. <laughs> so shit. I can't do it or the, well, or so the Marquise, the Marquise can't, can't do it. it. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's do get, that. Gets you a point though. Gets me a point and then this is gonna go out of the game. Yeah, so good. I have no cards in my hand and now I will resolve my decree. So I'm going to recruit twice again in this clearing. Same spot, yeah. So two and another two, because my leader is charismatic. And then now I must move twice from this uh, rabbit clearing. I don't want to have to give Naveen two cards. Yep. So that's not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, all five into this clearing. Okay. And I don't have a card in my hand, so Naveen gets to draw the top card I do. from your deck. I'll take it. And then I'm going to move my final bird into this clearing. Somewhere else. Okay. Yes. So I literally did that <laughs> to protect my program. <laughs> oh my gosh. And now... <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. I'm trying to figure out my, clear, my, my program here. And now we're going to go into battle. So... You have to do a fox battle. I have to do a fox battle. So let's go over here. Ready? Yes. Come on. Low. Three, two. Oh okay. gosh, that's not good. Well, you knock them out. I knock them out, but they do one damage to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I remove both of these. Yep. So that's going to get you a point. That's going to get me a point. So this goes back. That's good because we don't want them scoring more of these sawmills. Yeah, one point for that cardboard shit. And I'm required to battle again, which is bad. So this might break. This might actually break my uh, my program. Yeah, so I'm required to you battle, have to battle you. battle there, yeah. Oh, that's so so I get the higher die because it's uh, Gorilla War. The defender as the Woodland Alliance gets the higher die. Oh, wow. Gosh. Three zero. So I take three of you out. And I, I don't... Uh, don't do any damage. And technically I'm supposed to be asking Naveen if he'd like to ambush. But did you want to do that? No, it's okay. No? Yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Based off the results, definitely not. So this is going to break my program, which is very unfortunate. But uh, maybe that's a good thing in disguise, I guess. So now I'm going to build. I'm going to build here. And so Roost goes out, yep. Yep, Roost goes out there. And the reason why I break my program is because I cannot build in a mouse clearing. Yes, because this mouse clearing already has a Roost. And that's the other mouse clearing that you are trying to go for. Yeah, and technically I could have built here had I not had to go into battle with Naveen. Um, but because I do not rule in this clearing, I don't get to build a Roost. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I now go into turmoil. <laughs> I first get humiliated. I lose <laughs> one victory point per bird card so three. in my decree, so it's minus three. One, I'm not two, gonna three. score any points. My goal here is, to, can we just get to 10? Let's get to 10. <laughs> Before somebody gets to 30. Oh boy. Now I discard my entire decree. Everything that I've worked towards. You, you keep the loyal viziers. They don't go yes. into the discard. They are loyal after they all. They are loyal. Yep. But all of these get discarded. My loyal viziers are going to get replaced um, into my decree depending on my new leader. So my leader gets deposed. I'm going to flip it face down. And I don't actually get access to this leader until I go through the rest of my leaders again. Which is not which the is goal. pretty rare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I get to choose a new one from okay. the, these three. Ooh. And you know what? I am going to choose the commander. So as a commander, my viziers start in the move and the battle actions here. Okay. And my my benefit is as an attacker in battle, I get to deal an extra hit. So you <laughs> so all better zeros watch out, will Naveen. Be ones. Okay. <laughs> I will I'm watch coming out. for you. I know you are. Go away. <laughs> go north. And now I go straight into evening. I get to score two victory points. points yep. So you get some back. I draw one card plus one more. Because you're out of cards, right? I'm, I'm out of cards, and I know I end my turn by drawing. Oh, that's two right. Cards, that's right. Yeah. Well, Stay away. I, I, I don't want to do anything with it. I just needed to get There's that base out there. You, a lot of orange on the board. <laughs> you go elsewhere. I, I will try to go to orange. Okay. All right. So the first thing I can do is revolt. I can't because I only have sympathy in these two locations and they already have bases. Any area that I can get out of legally has three people in it. Except for this one. So I could technically spread sympathy there. Okay. I'm going to spread sympathy into this clearing here. And I'm going to spend my wild to represent that bunny rabbit there. 
and I'm gonna be able to take this one token and put that sympathy here. And the reason why Naveen was mentioning that is yep. because if any of the adjacent clearings has three or more of an enemy, three or more enemy warriors in it, then mm -hmm. he must spend an additional supporter. An additional card, yeah. To do that. So and so this, this had three, that had three, three, uh, three everywhere. So yeah. that one doesn't, I get one point because that's what it is there. And with Daylight, I'm just going to mobilize all three of my cards into my supporters here. Wow. So I'm just going to do it one, two, three. And now I get to go into the evening phase. So this one is going to be a little bit different here. So I'm going to I'm going to move. I'm going to move from here to here. Okay. Okay. And then I am going to organize. And what organizing is, is I remove the warrior. And then I can freely place a sympathy token into this spot right here. Without having to discard Without any supporters. Exactly. That's it's nice. going to get me one point for doing that. This warrior comes back here. So that was action one, action two. So move, organize. And then I'm going to do a recruit action, which is going to put this right back there. That's my three actions. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then now I'm going to draw a card. So I get to draw three cards, please. All right. Come on, Marquise. Where are you? You need to control the Woodland Alliance. Leave me alone. You gotta control Naveen. All right, so Marquise, order card. Here we go. Oh, it's mouse. another mouse. So same thing, so, right? So this is not a craftable card. So yep. we're gonna go straight into daylight. Um, no there's battle. no battle zones for the, the two mouse clearings. Yep. Right? Yep. All right, so then they're going to recruit two and two. Two and two, okay, so we got two here and two there. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Okay. So now let's build. And they're going to build another uh, rec recruit. Yep. Recruiter. Yep. And is there a spot over there? There is a spot. Okay. Yeah, and it's okay that they're the same building type. For the um, bot. Yeah, for, for the for the Marquise actually, the Marquise mm -hmm. can can build the same building type in the same clearing. Yep. Now they are going to move because yes. these two clearings <laughs> do have more than three in them. So let's start with this clearing. So it's going to be two. Ooh. So they're either going to move into this clearing. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces to Naveen's four. Okay, so they're going to go here. All right. And then this clearing is going to have two warriors move to... This one. This one, because Naveen is technically present here I'm... with a little sympathetic token. Yes. Don't you wish you didn't put that there? Well, I get a card. Oh, because yeah. Because they so, moved in. So maybe you're happy that you did that. Come in, support me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we skip the expand. And now they're going to score points based off of how, however many um, recruiters they have out. Yes. So it's two points. Two points. One, two. Go away. Naveen, you got to control them. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm, I'm over here try. losing my, my program. <laughs> turmoil. Ah, going to turmoil. Okay, so now back to me. Wow. And now I have to choose to add, gosh, I, need, I should just add both of these cards to my decree because right now it's empty. I can only move and battle. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to start by playing both of my cards okay. into Recruit uh -oh. because I desperately need um, to Stuff. get more traction. And so I don't have any cards in my hand, so I can't craft anything. Sure. But I will uh, resolve my decree. So I'm now I'm going to Recruit twice, once in this clearing. And so now that I'm not a charismatic leader, I can only Recruit using one, one, that's right. one warrior. And then uh, I'm going to Recruit into this, this clearing over here because yep. it's a fox clearing. Fox. Yep. And now I must move. Anywhere. Anywhere. Any type, yeah. Let's move north. I want to move four of these warriors. Let's kind of stay away from Naveen for okay. a second here. I don't want to get him any more supporters. Yes. So we're going to this clearing. I was ruler of this clearing, yes. so I was able to do that. Uh -huh. And now I'm going to battle them. Nice, good luck. So, thank and you. you get one more battle point. I do. So you can max four here. I'm counting on it. Of course. Okay, well, <laughs> so it's 2-1 technically. 2-1. They pick off one of my warriors. I pick off two of theirs. Not bad. Eh, not good either. Hopefully we're it's not, a setup for the next one. We're not looking good here, Eerie. If, if you can clear off those two cardboard, though, that's two points. That'll right be two that's points. That's pretty good. Right. So I do not have a card in my build action, so I don't get to build a roost. Okay. And now I will score two points. Two points, yeah. And draw two cards. Not bad. Okay, so the scores are six, seven, and 11. Yeah, so Naveen, you need to get the Marquise right now. The Marquise, you say? Yes. Well, then maybe I should revolt here. Oh, good thing Let's, I didn't go there. Yes. I was thinking about going there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, please go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm revolting there, so it's going to cost me two uh, foxes. So I have one fox, one wild. All right. That is going to clear all five of these baddies out. Now, I get no points for that, but, but... But you get all of those baddies out. They all go out, and I get to put out a base 
here. Oh my gosh. As well as a warrior there. And then uh, this one is gonna come here. And these all actually turn up. This is how I keep track of how many turns I get. So now I have four evening actions. Okay, so now uh, I can spread sympathy and I think I might just do that. So I'm gonna spread sympathy into this rabbit section here. And now it's gonna cost me two now because I'm in this little uh, band. So it's gonna cost me two yellow. All right. And this sympathy is gonna come into this section here. That's gonna get me two points, one, two. And I cannot do any further because I only have one card in my supporters. So no matter what, I can't do any more. All right, so now let's go into daylight. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple crafts. Let's craft a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna craft this one, which is, uh, I need to be in a rabbit territory, which I am. Uh, and I get the boot, the last boot, and I get one victory point. So the boot will come here. So I have two boots <laughs> and a point. All right, and then the last two cards, I am just gonna mobilize and put them down into my supporters. Uh, I have no cards left, so now we're gonna move into military operations in the evening. So you have four actions, what are you gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna move. So I'm gonna move from here into this section. Okay. And then I'm gonna do that organize, which allows me to put out one of my sympathy tokens here. And then this kind of gets destroyed into my collection. So that gets me two points. Okay, so that was two actions. Two actions. So that's action one and action two. And now I'm gonna recruit. So I'm gonna replace and put this back there. And I think I'm gonna battle. I think I'm gonna clear this. This I'm gonna try to clear that clearing out. Ugh. Yeah. So I get to roll. So I get the high die here. And now do you get a, a plus one on defense? Nope. Okay. Only when attacking. So it's a three one. So both okay. of yours go out and then one of mine goes out. Yeah, so you go ahead and take yours. Okay, that's gonna go there. And that is it for me. Okay, so I get to draw now four cards. One plus one, two, three, so four cards. One, two, three, four. All right, so we gotta get Naveen's base out of here. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Uh, if we can eliminate one of the bases, then that's actually a very, a very good thing. So maybe we'll work on that. Go away. <laughs> Deal with this. Points for you. Okay, speaking of the Marquise, let's go ahead and see what they draw. <gasps> oh, bird song. This is our first is bird order card. So first things first, this is not a craftable card, no. so they do not craft. But the thing about the bird uh, <laughs> order cards is they go into escalated daylight. Yes. This is kind of like a terrible version <laughs> of their daylight phase. Oh, gosh. So first thing that happens is they battle in every clearing that they're in that has an enemy piece. So let's just start. Let's uh, go in numerical order. Yeah, let's so. go in target priority. Sorry, let's go into uh, priority order. So no enemies. Uh, yes, enemies. there's an enemy here. But so this might be a freebie takeout for you. Maybe. This could be. They can only deal one damage to you. That's only true. one warrior. I like the sound of that. Two zero. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so they're going to remove one of my warriors. I don't remove yeah. any of theirs. And I don't know if we mentioned this, but you cannot ambush the bot, by the way. If you yes. have an ambush card, you cannot use you it. You cannot ambush it. the yes. bot. That's true. Okay. Uh, and the reason why they only deal uh, one damage is because they only have uh, one warrior yep. there. So one to one. It's one swipe. Yep. Next, next one is this clearing. Three they are not one. present. Here. So I am going to lose this one no matter what because I, I'm defenseless with only one token so here. So they don't even need to roll. No need to roll. I lose this, but I get a card for them doing that. There you go. Into your supporters. And they get a point. They do get a point. For so you got to stop spreading your sympathetic tokens. <laughs> but that's how I get points. It's getting them spreading. points, Naveen. <laughs> well, we're tied. I can deal with it. Okay, so clearing number five. There's no enemies. Number six. Where are we here? Y you have enemies. Oh, there. gosh. Good here luck. we go. Good luck. Come on, Dice. Come on. Come on. Okay. Dude, okay. So, so it's going to be 2-2. So you guys take two, each two. other out. Yeah, we take... Well, oh, actually, no. They no. take your roost out. They remove my roost. No, no, they don't. They don't. Because they can only do a damage of two. Ah, oh, thank they you. They have two warriors total. Ah, oh, yeah. thank goodness. Okay, so 2-2. So two, two. All the warriors go bye-bye. That's great. That's great news. All right, so that's six. We're going to go to seven. Nope. They're not there. Eight. By themselves. By themselves. Nine here with me. So they go ahead and remove that sympathetic... Uh, they do. Their sympathy but token. But get a card and they get a point. So they get a point. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. Card. They're not here, they're not here, and they're not there either. So now they're going to recruit two warriors each in the two clearings that they roll of lowest priority. So I believe those two clearings are nine and eight. Yes, nine and eight. So it's going to be two, two warriors here two warriors, and two warriors here. And two warriors here, uh-oh. This is not good. Next, they're going to build the building type that they have the most of out onto the board which is the recruiters yeah so this is going to score them a ma the maximum number of points right. essentially right and so they're going to build that building 
in the clearing that has the most number of their warriors. I think it's going to be here. So There's five total here and have, five there. Yeah, here or there. So it's looking like this because it's the highest, uh, higher priority. Yep. Oh, so, wow. so they will score three at the end of this. They, they will. And then last, but especially not least, they're going to move into adjacent clearings from clearings that they have more than three warriors of. So similar to the, the, the standard daylight, but the difference is now the clearing that they move into, they're going to start a battle. Yes. So this is done simultaneously. I believe the only two clearings that that actually affects are these two. This one and then that one right there. Yeah, so, this, so two of these warriors are going to go into this clearing and we're going to battle. And two of these warriors are going to go into this clearing, and um, they are going to battle. So because they moved into a clearing with my token, I get a card. That's right. And Keep so let's go ahead and start uh, with this battle over here, which is me, unfortunately. Oh, I have like no more presence on the board. Of two course. Zero. Two zero. Wow. This is, I'm, oh I'm not doing gosh. well at all. This is a- uh, That's bad luck right there on the This is kind of some bad luck. Okay, um, here they're gonna roll. I get the higher die though, so that's good. One, one, one one okay so we both go out one one uh oh <laughs> and that finally ends their daylight phase that was really nasty that was too much <laughs> it's too much so now they're going to go into the evening phase they score the number of points equal to the highest uh the highest row yeah. essentially one, so it's three two, points three. they're moving and now they are more than halfway <laughs> to victory naveen are we gonna let this cat win uh, no <laughs> i can't i'm not trying <laughs> So let's discard this card, oh and now it's gosh. going into my turn. Good luck. Oh my gosh. What am I doing Clear that life? out. You need to clear that out. Yeah. Because they can't put those out anymore, because they're going to get a lot more points if they put that type out. That's true. Okay. So um, I'm going to start by playing both of my cards to my decree. Okay. I'm going to place another fox card here. you got to get people on the board. we got to get some more people on the yeah. board. All of my people are over here. And then um, with this mouse card, I'm going to try to build in mouse clearings. This nice. might be the end of me as well, okay. <laughs> but we're okay. going to try and see um, how often we can do this. I don't have any cards in my hand, so I'm not going to craft, but I'm going to resolve my decree now. So two recruit actions in the fox clearing, the only one that I have a roost in. There. Yeah, two. So here we go, two okay. warriors, and then one in my bunny clearing over right. here. And then now I'm going to move, and I'm only going to move one warrior into okay. that clearing. I'm going to leave one behind sure. just in case uh, some people try to do some things to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to battle in this clearing. Good so luck. I literally have to get a 0-0 zero, zero for it to break my program. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, considering the luck that I've had so far. <laughs> You've rolled a lot of zeros. That might not be far off. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. So we've got 3-1. Which is um, technically 4-1. Yeah, which is technically 4-1. This but, is great. Uh, this is fantastic. So <laughs> yeah. the, the, the cat is going to remove one of my warriors. Sure. And I'm going to remove all three of their pieces. The cat goes one, away. I'm going to remove two, both of these recruiter buildings. That is great. Which is great because it's scoring them so many points whenever they, they activate it. Well, you get... It's going to get me two, two points. points. Yeah. One, two. Because they were both cardboard pieces. And wow. that feels Wow, and now you've great. opened up a double build there so you can buy yourself some time. I can't build my roost twice. Oh, you can't build your roost in twice. In the same clearing. Yes. So that's what's kind of tough about it. <laughs> but I will take advantage of the one time yes. I do get to build. Sure. And I'm going to place this roost out. Get yourself some points. Onto uh, that clearing. Oh, that's solid. Yes. That'll get you three Fantastic. points and you're right back in it. Uh, yeah, I one, guess two, so. Three. Yeah, you're right back in it. Okay, so solid. now I'm going into evening. I'm going to score my three points. So one, two, three. I'm right behind you okay. there, Naveen. Yeah, you are. And I get to draw oh, no. two cards. <laughs> Okay, so I can no longer revolt anymore because all three of my bases are out. So this yes, whole thing is just completely nothing. Until the bases return, which is a possibility, it could Naveen happen. cannot revolt. It could happen. Uh, okay, I will I will spread sympathy. So I'm going to spread sympathy down into this section here. It's going to cost me two um, bunnies. So I'm going to spend wild and bunny. So that's going to go there. Okay. That's going to put this out. And that gets me two points right away. One, two. Nice. Uh, do I want to spread more sympathy? That is a good question. I will. I'm going to spread more sympathy. So I'm going to spend these two to sp uh, spread into this section here. Okay. Okay. So that's my last of the two section. That goes there. That gets me another two points. So back with you, cat. <laughs> uh, I have two cards left. The next uh, whole section requires three cards to do this. So... Expensive. Not going to happen anytime soon. All right, with Daylight, I am going to mobilize all four of these cards into my supporter deck. That's very boring, but I'm going to do it there. <laughs> it's a setup. All right, now my officers for evening. Okay, the first action I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit. So this is going to be one action. I'm going to recruit, and I'm going to recruit this mouse here. 
the second action I'm going to do is I'm going to move that mouse. So this mouse is going to come here. The third action I'm going to do is organize. So this mouse is going to come off the board. So that second action was move, organizes the third, and that allows me to freely put out this sympathy token into this clearing. And that gets me three points. Okay, so now you are past the Marquise here. Yeah, and then I should probably recruit, and I will recruit. So I'm going to spend this one to recruit back here. <laughs> <laughs> so I can just kind of keep that a little bit safe. That's me. That's you? That's all four, yes. Yeah, so right, now I get so... to draw four cards. Okay. You got to go. probably reshuffle one, two, soon. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we are going to reshuffle very soon. All right, oh, so... Boy. Back to the mechanical marquise. Let's hope this is not another bird card because that was that was brutal, terrible. Brutal. Ready? Yes. No Order bird. card. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. That's that stinks. <sighs> so we are going to do the escalated daylight. Same thing we just did. Once again. All right. This is bad. So we're battling in all all clearings where they have enemy pieces. So this time let's just kind of go where we Left see right. yeah. orange. Well, here's me. Okay. They're gonna battle me. I, they win. Okay, so, this comes so back. you get this card into your supporters. I do. They get a point. I do. So let's shuffle this. Do you mind shuffling this while we sure, do yeah. the next one? Okay, so the next clearing that I see is this one. Yep. And so, so they're this going to... going to actually roll die. So come on. Uh, let's roll a 1-0. One 1-0. Zero. One zero. One zero. Two Ooh, zero. 2-0, yes. So they go out because I am the defender. I'm, I'm happy about that, yes. actually. <laughs> yeah. This Here. one? Okay, this is a auto... Auto loss. So Here's a card for here. your supporter deck, and Thank they you. get a point. They do get a point. Oh my gosh, my spread is looking bad, bad, and bad. And then they're going to battle you here. Uh, Good luck. Come on, kick, kick her when she's down. Zero, zero. Let's go. Three, Three one. one. So I remove one. They're gonna remove my roost and my worry. Oh, That's wow. kind of a good thing, so that my my uh. You don't have to deal with it. My program doesn't break here. Oh really? Yeah, because oh, then they can go in there and build. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm, that works. <laughs> now they're going to recruit in these two areas again. So two and two, okay, because yeah. they are the clearings of lowest priority that yes. they control. I, I don't think they're in 10, right? Yeah, they're not no. in here. Yes. <laughs> okay, so Ooh. now they're going to build. And so we actually have a tie for the buildings that uh, of, the, of the most number on the board. Mm -hmm. So in the case of a tie, the sawmill wins. Okay, yep. If it is a part of the tie. And it's going to get placed in to either this region or this one, because they're the two uh, areas that have the most number right. of... So this is full, so it's going to go here. Yes, so it's going to go right there. Yep. Perfect. And now they move. So same thing, only these, <laughs> these two um, clearings. And so these two are going to move to... It's supposed to be an adjacent clearing that has the most number of... Enemies. Enemies. So, and neither of these areas have any so enemies. I believe they go to the place with higher priority, okay. which is going to go here. And then this is now going to come and bother me. So two are going to come <laughs> in here. Hey, you get a card. I do get a card, and I believe this initiates a battle. Yes, they must move and then battle. So All right, come on. Good luck. Two zero. Three three. three. No. Three. Okay, so they're gonna take out so I take out one of theirs. They take out one of mine, and then I get to choose of these two. They're gonna take out my sympathy token and leave my base alone. So you get a card. Get a card. They get a point. They get a point. And that's it. Yes. So they stay here. They stay there. Ooh, that's not looking good for you. No. So now they get their two points, right? Because it's the end of their evening? Yes. So now they, they get two points for the end of their evening phase, and the cats have 21 points here. Cats out of the bag. To my 11. <laughs> All right. These cats. Bad. Too many, too many of these bird cards. Yeah, too many bird cards. Gosh. Okay. So back to me. We need to do something because... Um, I don't want the cat to win. I would rather Naveen wins. <laughs> that's, that's my current stance. Co-op. Yeah. So I'm going to play both of my cards to my decree. Okay. And so let's go ahead and play this mouse card to the move action. Okay. And my bird card to the build action. Okay. And I don't have any more cards in my hand, so I cannot craft. So we're going to go ahead and resolve the decree. So two warriors get recruited to my roost here that's in the fox clearing. One goes over here into the rabbit clearing that has my roost in it. And I have to move twice. Uh, once from here yep. and once from any other clearing. Hmm. And so I'm going to go ahead and move uh, two of my warriors from this clearing into this one. Okay. So that is my wild movement right there. And then I'm going to move from this mouse clearing into this one. So I'm going to move both of them. Everybody. Everybody's going. Go. We're all going. Okay. And we're going to battle in this clearing. Okay. And I'm going to try to attempt to take try that to shit out. So you, with your leader, you get one extra battle point. I do. So. 
Please, please, I've had bad luck. Come on. Oh, there you go. Okay, three and one. Overkill. So, yeah, it's overkill. So they are going to, unfortunately, eliminate one of my warriors. But in turn, I'm going to remove both of theirs. And so that's removing the sawmill, the much needed uh, sawmill off the <laughs> yeah. board. So you get a point. And I'm going to get a point. Yes. Um, like that. And then lastly, I'm going to build twice. Nice. Once in a wild clearing, which is going to be this rabbit clearing. And then the second one, mandatory, is this mouse clearing. <laughs> oh, that's nice that that's a rabbit clearing because your recruit, you can now recruit into there. Yes. That's great. It's it's not bad. So I built two roosts this turn. I'm going to end my turn by uh, scoring four points. Four points. Yep. So we're going to go up to 16. There you go. Slightly closer. Yeah. And then I get to draw two cards. Two cards. Okay. One, two. Okay. Done? Yep. I'm done. All right. So now it's my bird song. So revolt again, I can't do anymore. So let's start doing some stuff. Uh, the first thing I will do is spread sympathy into this mouse clearing by spreading two of these. Okay. So that's going to go Oops. into there. And that gets me two points. Hello, cat. <laughs> you know what? I'll spend two more. Okay. To go from there now into this section. So that's going to get me another two points. Okay. One. Perfect. All right. Can I do any more? Yeah. Can you can you earn seven points right now? Do you have? <laughs> well, I can. Draft? I can do this. These three. So I'm gonna move sympathy from here into here. So this is gonna be because now it's in the three category. Okay. So I get a sympathy out there. That's gonna get me another three points. Yeah. One, one two, two, three. three. Wow. I'm trying. <laughs> you can. You can do it. I'm trying. Oh my gosh. Are you gonna win right now? And then I can take these three. The mouse clearing going into here because there's only two warriors if there was a third warrior there then it would cost me an extra card so one two three mice okay that's gonna put this one here and that's one two three <gasps> four that's four points that's a four point that's it that's it <laughs> <laughs> you knew this was coming you're like sure go ahead monique do your decree but i'm gonna win on my turn oh yeah. ah. And I had an anvil to build in the next turn. Wow. Oh my gosh. Good job. Yay. Oh, Good job. I'm glad that you won. Thank I was really you. nervous for a second there. This cat. I'm like, no, we, we cannot Stop let the, the, cat. the bot. The bot is going to win. We cannot let the cat win. Yes. Wow. That you did it. Up. Wow. That escalated quickly. Yes. <laughs> that was a lot of points at the very end there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in um, my performance today. I just want to say. You know, you had a couple zero rolls that were just like, oh. Uh, that happens. Yeah, wipe It you does off. happen. Yeah. That is the nature of a, any kind of dice rolling in a game, mm -hmm. I, essentially. But I had fun trying to make my program work, and that is what matters. That's what matters, yeah. Right? Okay, so let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. But before we talk about it, actually, Naveen, this is your year. 2021. The year of Naveen. That's right. So this is what it usually yes. looks like when we play games at home. <laughs> Naveen does win a, a, a fair amount. I see those comments out there, okay, <laughs> that Naveen doesn't win, Naveen never wins, Monique wins. You know, it took a year and a half for Naveen to get used to the lights. <laughs> That's, that's what lights. it is. It was the lights. The lights yes. were dazing him. Yes. I was like a rookie, you know, in the <laughs> NBA or something like that. But, ah, All right. Yes. So, I did this, that was Root. Uh, that was Root with the all base game only. Yes. Base game map, uh, base game factions, no bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. And uh, with one bot from the Clockwork expansion, which yeah. is the Mechanical Marquise. Yep. So we're going to discuss uh, how we feel about the game in terms of two different things, in terms of the actual gameplay itself, because we've never covered Root before on the no, channel. No. And then in terms of the Clockwork expansion, playing the game at two, yeah. right? Yep. And we decided to go with this series because, you know, we didn't really have a very good experience, to tell you the truth, that first yeah. time that we played. Yes. And this game is so popular. Mm -hmm. People really, really love this game. Yep. It's like a it has like a cult following. It does, yeah. And so we were like, you know what? We didn't really truly understand the game the first time we played it. Let's yes. actually learn it and then form a proper opinion after we played each faction. The right? very, yeah, the very first time we ever played this was at a local convention. And it was like, hey, you want to play Root? Uh, I've never played it before. Monique, have you ever played it? No, we never played it before. And it was like, here, read this little pamphlet about your faction. <laughs> and we're like, okay, so I can, okay, this is what I do. But we had no idea what anybody else could do. Mm -hmm. And so we were just kind of just going around and playing into other people's strategies. The, the people that yes. we played yeah. with, they taught it well, they did I would say. Well. But yes. there's still definitely a certain degree to yeah. this game where you have to play the game 
you have to experience each faction, at least these first three that we played with. The Vagabond is its own character, yes. but you have to experience all three of these factions in order to truly understand the strategy that is yep. behind and the overall picture of the game. Mm -hmm. Because the first time we ever played the game, I felt like it was way too, it was like a tug of war. Like you're doing all this to go two points, two to points, go yeah. one point. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, it was too, it was very frustrating for yeah. me. Yep. And I didn't really fully grasp, you know, what my opponents could do. And the first time we played, I was the Marquise. Yeah, I <laughs> was the Eerie. He was Eerie and oh, didn't man. fully understand the strategy of the Eerie. So, yeah. so the whole time we played, I could just hear Naveen over and over again going, Ah, oh, my program broke. <laughs> yeah. God, I didn't know how to use this faction. Yeah. So it was like three points forward, two points back every single time. It was a frustrating experience to say the least. Mm. And so now that we've played this game, let's start with theme. Yeah. Okay. To me, this game has the cutest theme. One of the cutest themes ever in like, uh, you know, a cult classic kind yes. of game. Yeah, it's uh, it's surprisingly vicious for its theme. This for, is a for, war yeah. game. <laughs> you know, you could re-theme it and make it like really feel a lot more aggressive, a lot yeah. more... I guess I shouldn't call it aggressive because it's actually not that punishing. It's just very strategic. Yeah. It's incredibly strategic. Uh -huh. So I love this theme. I think uh, in terms of theme and components, this has got to be one of my favorite games in terms of production. Uh -huh. You know, leader games over and over again, you know, we've, we've seen it with, with a card game as simple mm -hmm. as Fork. They're very consistently high quality in terms of their production. Yeah. And so the, the components in this game are just fantastic, adorable yeah, all around, really right? Yeah, fantastic. What do you think about the theme? Yeah, I like the theme. Uh, I, like, I like the theme that it is asymmetric. Yes. Uh, that the theme and the mechanics kind of interweave very, very well uh, in this game. I'm excited to play all the other factions. Yes. Yeah. In terms of player count and replayability. So yeah, we well we just played it with the bot, and I think it's it is interesting with the bot because mm -hmm. um, I've I've heard base game two player only. Even though the box says you can play two to four players, I've heard at two players it's not very good. Yeah. And so we've actually played this game three player with the bot and over FaceTime with a friend. Mm -hmm. And of course, four player in that very first time we ever played. And also yeah. we have the app. <laughs> so yes. in, in preparing for this game, there is an app mm -hmm. on, on, the I, on iOS devices and it is really good. Yeah. Um, and so we've, you know, we've been able to kind of experience multiplayer that way. But I would say that in terms of the Clockwork expansion, it is a very good expansion. Yeah. You know, it's not going to perfectly simulate a player. There are things, there are little nuanced things that you kind of lose out on, like the specific effects of the building types mm -hmm. that the Marquise puts out. You know, you're no longer taking into consideration wood tokens, which also means you don't get to score points for removing those wood tokens. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say though, some the way the, the bot works kind of allowed me to get points faster because mm -hmm. the bot was forced to take my tokens off was forced to go into areas for me to get me more cards meaning so at the very end i was like well i got all these cards i can just lay out a bunch of sympathy yeah that's true so in a game where it's a it's a human playing the cat they probably would have been like okay i'm gonna avoid naveen there because yes. i don't want him to get anything extra let him grind and try to figure it out yes so i will say the bot kind of helped me out there but that also can play into naveen's strategy yeah. as a woodland alliance i know that if the mechanical marquise pulls this order card they're going to be forced to take my sympathy token so maybe i'm going to put my sympathy token there right exactly yep. um so i think it is a little bit harder for the eerie or maybe i just didn't play it well i don't know you tell me let us know yeah um but it it, it does definitely it's a lot more punishing because they, they get to battle in like, if they if they pull a bird card, they're going to battle in all Everywhere. the clearings that they're in. Yeah. So the bot is quite aggressive. Yes. And you can scale the difficulty of the bot uh, with those um, level of difficulty cards that we did not those play with at all. Cards, yeah. You can make it easier. You can make it more difficult if you want a challenge. You can also add traits to that bot, which we're probably going to showcase in the next uh, playthrough. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think that the Clockwork expansion is fantastic for filling in. You don't even have to fill in just one player. We could do a four player game with two bots, yep. which I don't know, we may do in the future. I want to see we'll all see. four bots playing against <laughs> each other. <laughs> just like automate the bots. Just automate everything, yeah. <laughs> Zero players. But it's also good news for those of you who play solo. Because yeah. you can do solo, yes. you can do a four player game with you and three bots. Yes, you can. But in general, the last thing that I want to say about player count is I think that the four player game is probably still the best the version richest. of yeah. this game. Mm -hmm. Put the Vagabond in there so that the Vagabond can checks and balances, you know, all the factions so that yeah. not one gets, you know, really dominating, I right. guess. And what about in terms of replayability? Yeah, so I mean, we've played this now a lot, quite, a, quite a bit, and um, every single time I play it, I, I'm very excited. I think there's so much replayability because now you can play as all these different factions also. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, I, okay, I'm just going to always be the Woodland Alliance. 
Yes. So th that adds so much replayability because now it's like, oh, I want to explore what the Vagabond has to do. And I want to explore that six times, you know, yes. before I want to move on to the next one. So yes, you can purchase all of the expansions. You can get all of the different factions and mix and match and kind of see how everything feels when you mix and match the different factions together in a game. And I believe there's a bunch of different maps also. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was going to also mm -hmm. mention that, that that there's also the winter side of this board. Yep. But also, it's a game where it makes me feel like every time I come back to the table, I want to try something new. Mm -hmm. Even if I play the same faction, I'm going to try. I'm going to try a different strategy. I'm going to play as the Eerie again, and I'm going to start with a different leader. Yeah. Right. Just one of those games that you can just play over and over again and still enjoy it every single time. Yeah. In terms of weight, that's another thing that I really like about this game. It is not heavy. the The heaviest part of the game is the rules overhead. Yes. Once you figure out how the game plays, then you just follow it's the straightforward. Instructions, yeah. And now in terms of mechanics, what are your thoughts? It goes back to the asymmetry thing for me. So like everyone has the same mechanics, but they all work a little bit differently. Yes. Uh, I think the most interesting mechanics though are the eerie with the programming. I love this faction. Yeah, that I is the most interesting thing. Do too well in this playthrough, yeah. <laughs> but I do. But I really do think that this is. An interesting faction. Yes. I, I find the area to be very strategic. And before we continue, I also do want to mention that for anybody who's looking for strategy guides for Root, Lord of the Board, Lord of the Board. on YouTube, and we're going to link his channel in the description below, but he does fantastic Root uh, strategy guides, player guides. Mm -hmm. And I believe he's going to cover the next expansion that they just announced, yes. which is the Marauders, Marauders. expansion, yep. specifically for two players, by the way. Oh, is that right? Um, well, I, I believe it benefits the two player game. Even more. Even more, yeah. Okay, cool. So, but what I was going to say about the Eerie that I really, really like about them is they're building this program, right? And the scary thing about building that program is what if it breaks? It's going to break. It's going to break. Yeah. And, you know, the very first time, the very first or second time you play as the Eerie, you're like dreading the moment when your program breaks. You go into turmoil, you're going to lose that many points. But the thing that's interesting about it, you can strategically plan when your program is going yes. to break. You don't want your program to last forever because that means you're only going to be using that same leader mm -hmm. the entire time. I started the game with a charismatic leader, which allowed me to put out two warriors on the board when I recruit instead of one. Yeah. I don't want to do that the entire game. Right. At some point, I do want to transition into my commander leader, which gets me an extra hit in battle. Yeah. So if you can figure out a proper timing to say, okay, I'm okay with this, this uh, program breaking so I can move on to my next one and build it up it's all about timing I right, suppose. right and um yeah you had a, you kind of ran into a little bit of bad luck with that you had your leader that put out a bunch of people on the map mm -hmm. and then you rolled a bunch of zeros in defense or in defense and so you got wiped off a yeah, lot yeah i did and, and so, so then when you're Thing broke they weren't there for then that big military attack and then the charismatic leader is gone so now i'm only gone. putting one warrior out exactly, yeah so yeah. wasn't a very good moment for me yeah. <laughs> but i think the thing that kind of saves this faction is the fact that once the program breaks your roosts don't come off the board yeah that's, so yeah. yes it's scary to lose points for each of the bird cards that are so tempting to play into your decree mm -hmm. but you also still gain the points at the end of each uh, at the end of each turn yep. for having roosts onto the board yeah so you can net nothing break and then just start right over again right yeah. so it's not the end of the world and uh, i think that if you just plan for when your program breaks you'll be in good shape mm -hmm. okay aside from the eerie that the my favorite faction though to play uh is the woodland alliance the one that i played here they're uh, sneaky they are sneaky yes and at first you're like i'm not even on the board i'll get one point you know then you smack me down okay i get one card because you smack me down but once you finally get your first base and especially when you get your second base out there and you can sure up the base and protect them. And then now you start just kind of sending out uh, these um, sympathy tokens after that. And the way it just ramps up and ramps up, it gets very, very interesting. Um, yeah, and, they have the least amount of warriors. Yes. They must divvy them between their officers, officers and the warriors that they actually put out onto yep. the board. Uh, but they also get the higher number when they defend. Yes, that's it's, big. They, they're like one of those factions that, you, you know, just leave them alone. Let yeah. them do their thing because if you try to defend them, they, they, they punch hard. You yeah, know, they defend. I, I really enjoy the part of I'm going to purposely put out the sympathy token so that you can just trip it when you walk through, get me a card, and then, hey, if you want to defeat it, then get me another card so that I can just spit it right back out at you. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that sounds so really fun. Because of that, I think that specifically in the setup that we played, where we played as the Woodland, the Eerie, and the Bot was the Marquise. I think that we have to ignore the Woodland Alliance a little bit less than usual mm. because they can use the bot to their advantage. Yep. And uh, if if the Eerie just 
focuses on defeating the Marquise, like it typically plays out mm -hmm. in, in the standard game, then it, it's much harder because the Woodland Alliance can take over much quicker. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's definitely a thing in the Clockwork expansion. Yeah. Anyway, we can go on and on about this game, but um, I just want to say that I really, 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 really now love Root. Yes, yeah. This, this took some practice, and I do recommend for anybody out there who has played maybe one game, maybe two games of Root, and we're like, you know, I didn't really like it. If you want to see what this game is about, if you have that kind of interest, then I recommend playing as each of the faction types yeah. that are in the base game and then make a decision. One of the best ways to do that is through the app, like you said. Yeah. Uh, you can play as any one of the four base factions. I, I don't know if there's expansion factions or not, but... Um... But yeah, I was able to play as each one. I haven't played as the Vagabond on the app. The Vagabond is awesome. Yeah. I really do like the Vagabond, and I feel like it doesn't get as much uh, attention because it, it's just so different. Like yeah. People usually choose these three factions, uh -huh. right? But the Vagabond is really fun. Um, and so if you're willing to put in that kind of effort uh, to explore this game, I, I think it's really, really worth it. Mm -hmm. So final thoughts? Yeah, it's great. I'm looking forward to our next one. Uh, we still haven't decided what exactly combination of things we want to do, but we know we are going to be using some of the expansion factions. Yes. So we're so looking forward to that. We actually only have this, the base game, uh, the Clockwork expansion, and the Underworld expansion. Yes. We don't have the Riverfolk expansion, right. unfortunately, which now I'm thinking we need one day yeah. because I want to collect them all. I want the whole thing. Yeah. But uh, for the next playthrough, we're probably going to play the factions in the Underworld expansion yep. and kind of see how that works with the Clockwork. So if you have any interest in which bot that you'd like to see us uh, showcase next game, let us know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this playthrough and we hope it made sense. Yes, yeah. Sorry we didn't do a full teach, but uh, we figured you guys have more things to do than to watch <laughs> us stumble through the rules. So we will be back with another episode of Root. Next week. Next week, yes. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this and you want to follow along on the series, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye. Bye.